Welcome to Renegade Medicine. My name is Jay Allen. If you like this video, go ahead and like and subscribe. I'm joined today by my furry friend, Nietzsche. Today we're going to be diving into a video series I'm going to be doing over our medical school topics, an intro to those, and resources that you can use for those. Um, my school uses an organ-based system, but I think this will apply for any of you guys out there. This video is going to be aimed at um, first-year medical students, um, people going off to medical school, or anyone taking pathology who is looking for a little bit, um, maybe a little bit of help in that in that category, or looking for better resources. I'm a current third-year medical student, so I can give you a little bit of insight over the first two years and how that applies to hospitals. Um, we're going to dive in. Uh, the first part of this video is going to be over the mentality of pathology, kind of how to think about it, how to study for it. And then the second part we're going to dive into is resources that you can use for pathology. As you can see, I have a couple resources here that I'm going to be talking about. All right, with that, let's go ahead and dive into the first part of pathology. All right, so on that note, let's talk about the sort of the mentality of pathology. First off, what is pathology? Pathology is simply the study of the disease processes of the body. So you'll be looking at how diseases present themselves classically, the mechanisms of how that work, and maybe how to diagnose and delineate those diseases, whether looking at lab values, um, clinical manifestations, certain biomarkers they have. But you're going to be diving into that um, in your medical school studies. As far as our school did it, every organ system that we had, whether that was um, looking at the lungs, the heart, the kidneys, the reproductive system, neurology, um, every one of those you had to cover a certain amount of chapters of pathology. All right, so how to kind of study pathology. Um, first off, there's a rule of three that I tell new students to kind of um, follow during medical school. And what I mean by the rule of three is that for every medical topic that you have, um, you need three, three things. The first is going to be a major textbook. The second is going to be a high yield review book over that topic. And then the third is going to be a question bank specifically over that topic. And if you, as a, a younger medical student, if you use that as your firm foundation, um, you're going to be all right with medical school. You're not going to be lacking everything. And if you kind of take that rule of three for every subject that you're going to see in medical school, and then you kind of play around with that a little bit as you go through your studies, I think you'll be on pretty firm footing. Um, I think if you use that for virtually every subject you see, I think you should be, be able to do pretty well on your exams, be ready for the step, and then also be set up to do well on the future in rotations when you're a future doctor understanding medical theory. Um, my next set of advice for you guys is when you're listening to this pathology video is don't just follow everything I say. And what I mean by that is you, what you want to do as a medical student, as a younger medical student when you're watching these videos is take the best from everyone that you listen to and make it yours. And what I mean by that is um, what I tell you, there might be some really good things you can glean by that, but how I studied might be different for you. Maybe how I studied is perfect for you. But what you want to do is everyone that you listen to, take a little bit of what they're telling you, synthesize it, and make it yours. If, if you're watching a YouTube video and it says how I scored 250 on the step, well, hey, you know, how that guy studied might have been perfect for him. Maybe you're more of an auditory learner. Maybe you're more of a reader. Maybe certain things engage you different than another person. But if you're taking the best parts, the parts that you like from people who, who you know have done well in their first two years, I think you're going to be all right. You know, take the best things and kind of put them together and make a study plan that works best for you. Um, my next tip for pathology when you're studying is focus on mechanisms. You want to be able to synthesize answers by kind of looking at the big picture taking everything and then putting it together. Rote memorization might help you pass an exam, but that's really gonna hurt you when you're not only studying for the boards, but when you're in the hospital with real patients and you have your attending saying, these things are going on, what do you think is happening? What do you think the diagnosis is? What do you think the mechanism is? What would you expect to see in this patient? Um, and kind of what I mean by synthesize over memorize is this. I'm going to go ahead and give you guys 
an analogy for this. So think about memorization. If I say, I left my car lights on, my car won't blank. Well, if you left your car lights on, it, your, your, car won't, your car won't turn on, right? Now, think of this verse synthesizing. If I give you a question that says, your lights won't work, your radio won't turn on, your gas tank is full, and you just put a new starter in your car, what most likely happened? Well, you most likely left your lights on. And um, what I mean by that is the boards are going in a direction where you're having to synthesize answers, where they're starting to look at more at three-part questions rather than simple one- and two-part questions where it says, do you know the answer? What pathology questions and what the boards are starting to get at is saying, if I give you this, this, and this and kind of paint you a big picture, can you give me the answer? And that's kind of what you're going to want to be thinking about. And kind of on that note, mechanisms, mechanisms, mechanisms. You want to be understanding how things work. Um, so if you have a renal artery stenosis and you understand that that's going to um, get off, that's going to trigger the renin and angiotensin system, how does that affect the other organ systems? What's going on? So you kind of want to be thinking about that. If you know that... Um, other things, so think about the mechanisms, focus on the mechanism, look at the big picture. If this is happening on this organ, how is it affecting everything else? Because almost in the body, almost every time, you're not just going to have one part affected. It's going to be having an overlay in a handful of organs, sometimes, most of the time, most of the time I would say. Um, something that I would recommend for you guys, especially during your first or second semester is Pick up a laboratory laboratory interpretation value. I know um, a bunch of people say, um, hey, labs are given on the step or labs, you have access to that. And kind of the thinking is, is, so first off, yes, during the step, you will have access to lab values. However, um, A, it's a lot quicker to have them in your head and be able to give them. And second off, for the step, you're going to be you're gonna to have to be able to interpret those lab values. You're gonna to have to be able to say, hey, if my potassium is high or low, what's going on? If my, if my liver enzymes, if my AST is normal, my ALT is normal, but my, my GGT is normal, or my GGT is elevated, excuse me, what, what most likely is going on? What is my list of differentials? And not only that, um, when you get to the, the hospital, when you are in your third and fourth year, doctors are going to be asking you those questions like crazy. I, I, I don't know. Maybe my attendings, they love to ask questions over lab values. Hey, what is the normal value for this? What if this is elevated? What's going on? So get to know those. It'll help you a lot during the step. It'll help you a lot during your third and fourth year. And it will make you a better doctor if from year one, you're, you're always referencing lab values. Hey, you're in cardiology. What are the normal lab values? What's the normal blood pressure readings? What's a normal A and P? What's a normal the B and P? Oh, looks like I got another special visitor, my, my kitty cat, Tesla. Tesla, say hello. Okay, so get those lab values. Um, another thing that you can do talking about lab values and mechanisms is if there are things that you don't understand, mechanisms that you find hard to comprehend, what you can do is go ahead and YouTube those. There are thousands of videos going over mechanisms, going over things that are a little bit difficult to understand. Um, one that I really like to use, a lot of my friends like to, to use, were to watch Dr. Najib videos. Um, they're a little bit on the longer side, but they're gonna give you an incredible explanation of what's going on or how the mechanisms work so that you'll be able to understand that. Um, another thing for pathology is you, when you're studying pathology, repetition, repetition, repetition. In your undergraduate, maybe you read through the material once or you saw it in class a night before the exam, the day, a day or two before the exam, you review the material one more time and you got an A on the exam. That doesn't work with medicine. Medicine's a little bit more complicated. Everyone in that room with you is just as dedicated as you are. So the questions tend to be a little bit more difficult. Um, when you're saying, especially pathology and physiology, micro, pharmacology, repetition, repetition, repetition. You wanna be seeing that material and refreshing that material multiple times before your exam. When we had exams over the organ systems, for example, if we had neurology or we were going over renal 
what I would do is I would read through the physio and I would read through the pathology as fast as I could. I knew, hey, I've got three weeks before I've got an exam over this material. I would read through that material as fast as I could. Then I would grab a high yield book, read through that high yield book to refresh everything and kind of fill in blanks that I didn't understand. And then I would go to questions because when you're learning pathology, you don't quite yet know how to think like a doctor. You don't know what's important. So those question banks are gonna fill in the blanks of your knowledge and they're also gonna show you what's important for organ systems. If certain questions are being asked in those question banks, you're gonna tend to focus on that and the next time you're reading or reviewing for the test, you're gonna focus in on that material. It's kind of like you don't know, when you don't know what to look for, you're kind of just absorbing. But when you're told something's important, you're going to key in on that when you're reading. It's going to stand out to you and you're going to remember and absorb it more. Next thing that you want to know when you're studying pathology is nothing extra that you learn about medicine is a waste of time. And what I mean by that is a lot of students in my, in my school or some students in my school would say, oh, that's not going to be on the exam. You don't need to focus on that. Or, oh, that's not going to be important. No, ho, 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 another visitor guy. Okay. So, what you need to be thinking is that is a horrible thought process. Your thought process during year one and year two should be absorb medicine. Absorb as much medicine as you possibly can. Nothing that you learn that is medical related is going to be a waste of time. And what I mean by that is, sure, if something may not be highlighted in class or highlighted on the exam, I guarantee you that will come on the boards. And if it doesn't come on the boards, it's going to come in the exam of life. You're gonna have a patient and you're, something is just gonna click. Even in, during my third year, there are certain things from year one and year two that just seem to click. You know, you see a patient and then pop, that's what's going on. It comes back to you and it's, it's incredible. I'm sure that people who are a little bit more downstream than me, maybe residents or um, you know, people who are younger doctors would say the same thing. You know, you watch YouTube videos and say, man, it's, it's crazy how things that you learn in year one and year two come back to you when you have patients. So, you know, everything you're doing, you should not have the mentality of, oh, do I really need this? Oh, this isn't going to be on the exam or, oh, she didn't really talk about that in class. The thing is your mentality, especially for pathology, absorb medicine, absorb those mechanisms, learn them, you know, because... It's gonna help you down the road. It's gonna help you in year two when you're going over the material a second time with the emphasis on microbiology and pharmacology and you have a firm foundation in pathology and that's gonna help you when you go to the boards and you're reviewing the material and you already have a firm understanding and you just have to brush it off a little bit. Um, so uh, the next thing I wanna talk about is kind of uh, side projects. In, in construction, people have their main jobs and then a lot of times they have side projects. This is something that you can kind of adopt in, in medicine, in medical school too, is that even though you're gonna be reading an exponential amount of material, what you can do is in a little bit of time, you can kind of have your side medicine reading. And what I mean by that is um, grab a book. What I used to do is I have a case files book and before I would start my reading for the day, I would, I would read through a case or two that would kind of help me zone in. Or I would watch some videos over how to interpret um, thoracic x-rays, how to interpret um, a, a CT and MRI of, of the brain. And so if you start doing that from semester, wo semester one and you study enough that you can do well in the exams, that's going to help you not only for the step when they give you those, those medical imaging questions, but it's going to help you on rotations when the doctors are asking you, you know, hey, here's the x-ray, here's the MRI, what, what do you think is going on? Um, so I would definitely say that. And then my next tip for all you guys starting pathology or starting medical school is um, save yourself some money. Go on Amazon.com um, if you're a hard text reader and you can get some of these older editions of books for a lot cheaper than the newer editions. And I think that you know, I think I did well picking up some older, not, you know, not a book from 1990, but a book, you know, from 2000, 2013, that might not be the newest edition, but it was a lot less expensive. And in between lectures, video series, and review questions and first aid, I don't think you're going to be missing any of the new information that's out there. I think that 
99% of the information that you need is going to be in this textbook and that 1% that might be newer information that comes out or you know now they know the, the enzyme behind that, you're going to pick that up either in your first aid, in the lectures, or in video review series that you're seeing. So I think that you know for pathology, you can get away with picking up some older editions you know, the, not the newest edition, but the next older edition. And I think you're going to be, you're going to be all right. You know, I think you'll, your understanding of medicine will be okay. All right. So after that, let's go ahead and look at resources that you can use for pathology. All right. And now we're going to look at probably the reason most of you guys clicked on this video. We're going to be talking about resources for pathology. So this list is not, is not exhaustive, but it's what's worked really well for me. And so I didn't have to go out and look for any more resources because this gave me everything I needed to be on a firm foundation. So for pathology, you wanna think of kind of, you've got two sets of things that you're looking at. You're gonna be looking at your core material, which is a must that you are gonna be using for every organ system or you're gonna be using for your class to learn pathology. And then second are some additional resources that you don't necessarily have to be using, but would be really good if you've got some free time or you want to put in a little bit extra study over something or kind of in that side project reading time that you say, hey, this is something that interests me that I want to reinforce a little bit. So you've got your core resources and then your additional resources. All right, so let's dive in. The first one are your core resources. So the first one in this list is going to be Baby Robbins. So this book is gonna be your core textbook. Um, I really like this one. I think it has everything that you need. The difference between Baby Robins and Big Robins is that the Big Robins is gonna give you, for every chapter that it talks about, whether that's cardiology, hematology, it's gonna give you a physiology review before it dives into the pathology part of it. And I think that, for me, for physiology, I was reading through Guyton's so I didn't need to read through a physiology chapter before I got to the pathology, whereas the Baby Robbins is gonna give you just that pathology to read. Um, and Baby Robbins, I thought it was, um, it covered all the major diseases that you're gonna see per topic. It's really easy to get through, and it's gonna prepare you for those exams. The next topic, or the next book that I used was my high yield review source. So this is called Big Picture Pathology. Um, some people, there's the BRS series, there's Big Picture, there's some others out there, but this is what I really liked for pathology. And the reason that I liked this high yield source is because it has a lot of pictures in it. So for exams, for the step, um, seeing patients, you're gonna need to be able to kind of have an idea of what's going on or what certain diseases present themselves or look like. And big picture, not only was it a really great summary of the main points of every chapter, it also had a lot of high yield images that really helped me for um, not only just exams, but for you know preparing for the step. So I would really recommend, I think big picture pathology is probably the best high yield book or one of the best high yield books for pathology. Um, I also like the BRS series, but I think if you're going to be looking at big picture versus BRS, at least for pathology, I think your big picture is going to be your better bet. All right. So the next one that I like is my Q bank. So again, following the rule of three, I've got my major textbook, Baby Robbins, my high yield book, which is pathology, and I've got my question book. And kind of what I like to do this is maybe um, a week, or not a week, excuse me, a couple days before the exam, go through these questions and review them. This one is Robbins and, and, and Cotrin's Review of Pathology. The reason I like this book is it has questions very similar to what you're gonna see on the step. And what I mean by that is they set their questions up as very three-part questions. As in, you have to know the answer to step one, step two, step three. It's very kind of giving you the big picture and seeing if you can synthesize those, um, which is why I really like that textbook. Another, another series that I really like that you might want to look into is called the pre-test pathology. Um, pre-test questions are a little bit more first-order questions. It's more, um, 
hey, what, it's more, do you know the answer? You know, you read a vignette and it's, this is going on, do you know the answer? Hey, which state is in the middle of the country? Nebraska. You know, rather than which state produces corn, which state has the best people in the U.S., which state is known for its friendliness? Looking at all that big picture, put it together, Nebraska. So that's why I kind of like the Robins in, 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 in Katra because it's kind of that, that more bigger outlook having to put it together. All right, so your last core resource that you're going to be using for um, um, pathology, and I know – I said you kind of stick to the rule of three, but for pathology, this is kind of a little add-on to those core three, are pathoma videos. Um, there's a reason every single medical student talks about these. I think there's a reason that every most medical students use these during their dedicated study time for the step, is that these are really your best, your best you know, summaries of, of pathology. They're really good at explaining, they're really good to the point, and they're really good to review. Um, what I would recommend is while you're studying for your exam, try and watch those videos through at least once, maybe twice. You know, maybe start it off watching those and then read the chapter or read the chapter and then watch those because those are going to be really good. You know, I know sometimes in medical school you're reading and you get to a point where you're just burned out, but you can still keep going if you're watching a video, kind of give your mind a rest or read for an hour, read for two hours, watch a video read for another two hours, watch a video to kind of break it up and give your mind a rest. Um, pathoma videos are phenomenal for that. Um, I think every medical student probably, you, I, I would say, you know, upwards of a majority, if not all medical students use that during their studies because it's an excellent resource. All right, so now I wanna talk about some additional resources. Um, these are things that you can use, you know, if you're like, hey, I'm going to do, you know, you just finished your exam, you've got a little bit of space, a little bit of free time, a little bit of, you know, not that medical school is stress free, but you're like, okay, I just finished this exam, I've got a little bit of space where I can do some reading. Or during your breaks, you finish the semester and you're like, okay, I've got this entire break, what material am I going to go over again? So we've already talked about um, the case file series, but these are phenomenal. You could actually read these during your semester. I use them to, I would read through a case or two, maybe every other day, which would kind of help me get in the mentality to think. And if you do that, you can finish one or two books a semester, um, which is really going to give you a lot of additional medical knowledge that you could have put in your back pocket that maybe that might not necessarily come on this exam, but it's going to be something that preps you for your medical career and kind of helps you get ahead thinking about the boards. So these case file series are phenomenal. They, what they do is it's maybe eight pages per case. So it'll give you a case presentation. Then it'll say, what do you think is going on? Then it will give you the diagnosis. It will give you the key terms and then it will walk you through the process of what's going on and how you diagnose those or what exactly is happening with that patient. So these are phenomenal to kind of not to kind of start thinking or help you think in the big picture. Hey, this is how a patient is presenting. Can I figure out what's going on? And then you can check your answer and solidify or learn the mechanism for that disease process. All right. So I've already talked about this lab value book which is phenomenal to get. I would recommend getting that during your first semester. And don't worry about writing all these books down. I'll be posting a PDF with my book recommendations that you can look to. All right. Another one that you're going to be looking for is Weeder's Basic Pathology. And why I like this book a lot is I would recommend reading, reading the chapters at the end of the semester. When you finish and you're on break, Use that to review everything that you've learned for pathology from that semester. And why do I say that? Um, this book explains pathology. It will give you the diseases. It will give you a high yield explanation of those diseases. And it will also give you the histology images relating to those. So not only are you reviewing pathology when you look at that book, you're reinforcing your understanding of histology. And I know for me, someone who wasn't, um, I guess our school wasn't the biggest on histology, that really helped me understand histology and go from someone who was maybe 
below average in understanding histology to maybe someone a little bit above the curve in how I felt about managing a histology slide. So the next one is the Deja Review Series. Um, these I kind of like, um, especially the USMLE Step 1 book. How I use this resource is um, I know a lot of you kind of like to, you know, we're medical students, we like to memorize. You know, so you make time and you write out your list of things to memorize and then you go through it. This book does that for you. So what it'll do is, I think I can probably look at how it looks like. It'll give you a list of terms, a list of things going on. It'll say, you know, what are the coagulation factors that use calcium? And then it'll pop, 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 what you need to know. So um, kind of how I like to use those is, you know, maybe the day before the exam, I would run through, if I was in neurology, I would run through the neurology chapter, or I would run through half the neurology, and then the next day before the exam, I would run through the rest of it, you know, to kind of give myself a, a brief, you know, what are the key little, little facts I need to pick up and remember. Um, you know, in medicine, you've got to be a, a big picture kind of theory, but you know, there's, there's, you also kind of have to know some of those finer details so that you can get those answers correct. Um, and this is really good for students who like to read and are big on theory. This is gonna help you get, this is gonna help you memorize those, those couple little points. All right, the last resource I wanna talk about is Symptoms of Diagnosis by Lang. Why I really like this book is I wouldn't recommend it for year one, but I would definitely recommend it for your year two reading if you can fit it in a little bit. What this book does is it's really good to review symptoms. And what I mean by that is it will give you a symptom. It will say patient presents with headache, patient presents with um, um, syncope, patient presents with heart pain, patient presents with abdominal pain. And what it'll do is it'll go through the differentials it will go with, ah, doctor, I have heart, I have a um, pain in my stomach. And it will give you all the differentials and kind of how you can figure out from the symptom what's going on. And that's really good for because that's how patients present. You know, you're, hey, doctor, um, you know, I've got this. This is my chief complaint. What's going on? And so you have to take that chief complaint, figure out everything that's kind of going around there and then try and work your way toward di towards a diagnosis. And this book is really good at thinking about that and kind of you know, seeing symptoms and then being able to kind of synthesize and think what's going on. Hey, I have pain in my lower right quadrant. Okay, what's your differentials? What labs are you gonna order? What, what physical exams are you gonna do? What are the classical um, classical diseases that could be present and what things are you going to do to help you get closer to your diagnosis of whether it's this versus something else. And that book is phenomenal for that. So I would say if you can, you know, pick that book up. I would highly recommend it. I think, you know, every, every little bit of reading you can do, every little bit of knowledge that you can pick up is going to help you become a better medical student. And not only that, a better doctor for your patients, you know, because at, at the end of the day, when you finish, you know, some other person is putting confidence in your knowledge. You know, some person is saying, I'm going to trust you to try and make me better. You know, I'm going to put my faith in everything that you've done to study, you know, and I, I don't think at that time you should be thinking, oh, I really didn't study that hard or, oh, you know, I, I did the bare minimum you know, so I could just finish. I think, you know, when I see my patients, I want to be able to say, you know, I worked my tail off to get where I'm at to try and be a better doctor for you. So, um, the last couple things I want to talk about are some video series. So, best video series, I think, outside of Pathoma, I would recommend Boards and Beyond. I think they've got a really good series that are quick to the point. They explain it well, and they're a high yield review. So if you're looking for a video series, I would highly recommend Boards and Beyond. Also, during year two, um, Firecracker. Firecracker are high yield questions. Um, they're just, you can get them on your cell phone. It will just give you a quick little question. Then you can swipe, get the answer, 
Um, if you need more, you can click on more information. It's good for images. It's good for a quick refreshing and review. Um, and it's really good for pathology. It's really good for every medical school topic. I think it's really good to help you review for the boards as well. Um, Lectorio videos. I know some people use Lectorio. I think their, their pharmacology lecture is really good. But I think as far as um, lecture series go, I think Boards and Beyond is a little bit better done, a little bit easier to use, a little bit higher yield. I think Lectorio is okay, but uh, another, another surprise entry by my fur children. But um, Lectorio videos, I think... Some of them are really well done, whereas others kind of you're you're kind of left wanting more. You're kind of saying there, I, I you know I don't really feel like this was a good use of my time. Whereas boards and beyond, every video you watch is pretty to the point, and you say, hey, I just I just used 15 minutes to watch this video, but I think that was a good investment of my time. Um, the question banks I've already talked about pretest questions. They're really good to learn the material. They're very good one and two part questions that will you know, help you fill in the blanks of what you need. Um, so if you wanna choose or check out some of those pretests, those are another good resource available for medical students. And not only for pathology, but for every medical topic that you're gonna see. They're actually my go-to question bank right now in, in year three for every rotation. You know, If I'm going through internal medicine, I'm going through the pretest question bank. If I'm going through psychiatry, I went through the psychiatry pretest. And they're, you know, they, they're not the hardest to get through, but they're gonna really reinforce that knowledge that you need. All right, so the last two sources that I wanna talk about are USMLE style questions, like Kaplan, UWorld, um, USMLE RX and the like, and also talking about first aid. So as a younger medical student, especially in day one, you see people walking into class with a first aid. I think, I think you, I don't know if some people used to think they're cool, da da da, oh, I'm a medical student, look at my first aid, bam, 2019, I've got the newest one. You know, I don't think that's necessarily your, your best plan, I think, from day one, I think, yes, you can be going through USMLE style questions. I think that will give you a good idea of how the board questions are written and kind of how your thought process needs to be going. So if you go through a cardiology block, you know, maybe go through 40 cardiology questions from Kaplan or 40 cardiology questions from RX. Um, or 40 questions from UWorld. I kind of, for me myself, I saved UWorld until my dedicated, you know, so I could kind of um, save the best for last. USMLE RX um, are good, but they tend to have a lot of buzzwords, um, stuff that the, the boards are starting to sw turn away from. You know, if it says, da 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 da, someone has a cancer, it, it looked like a starry night. You key in on starry night and you've already got the answer. Whereas Kaplan tends to describe what a starry night looks like. And then you're like, oh, okay, I, can, I know what cancer that is based off of the description. And that's kind of what the boards are going towards. They're not going to give you keywords. They're going to explain those buds words. But, you know, if you want to go through a couple, if you have some extra time, go through some of those USMLE questions while you're studying to kind of give yourself an idea of what the board questions are going to look like. Um, as far as first aid goes... First Aid is not a book that you are going to learn on. First Aid is a review book. And what I mean by that is First Aid is kind of like an outline, quick descriptions with the assumption that you've already learned the material. Um, you know, you see some people who try and memorize First Aid or some people who are saying, oh, this is all I need to pass my exam. Bad idea, bad idea. Your first two years of medicine are the only time you're going to have where you can just absorb medicine. You wanna be reading your textbooks, you wanna be learning as much as you can. Um, as far as using first aid in your first year, your first couple semesters, um, until you really start thinking about the boards, is maybe use it before the exam, the night before the exam, go through it and kind of say, hey, have I covered all my bases? You know, Do I understand every point that they're talking about before I take this exam? Um, if you see students who are trying to use first aid as a major textbook, I think that's 
Um, I don't think that's a very good idea. You know, maybe there's some people who do phenomenal with it, but I think those would be more the exception to the rule rather than the rule itself. I think First Aid is a great review book. It's the Bible when you're studying for the USMLE. However, as a major resource, that's not its intended use. It doesn't explain. It isn't, you know, everything you need. It's more of the high yield facts, the high yield information that you need to succeed on the boards, to pass the boards. It's not all the background information you need to get to where you can use first aid. Um, so as far as using first aid in, in year one, maybe, maybe use that information as a review before the exam. But if that's your main resource, I would highly discourage against using that. All right, guys, I think that is that is everything. I will go ahead and post that textbook. But remember, you know, as far as pathology goes, stick to that rule of three. Get a textbook, a high yield book, a question bank for everything you use. Focus on mechanisms, synthesizing your answer rather than just rote memorization. Rote memorization is a no-no. It might help you pass an exam, but it will not help you when you start to get ready for the boards. Um, look at those lab values, YouTube, repetition, see it multiple times. And I hope a quick description of some of those resources will help you understand what you need for pathology. And like I said, this is not a complete list. Um, this is what worked really well for me. Maybe some of you guys agree, disagree, like some of these resources, don't. Um, like I said, take the best parts of this video and make it yours. If there's some things you say, ah, I'm not quite sure about that, you know, maybe that won't work for you. But it's what's worked really well for me and what I think can really help you get that firm foundation to start with when you're studying pathology in medical school. So as always, if you like this video, feel free to like and subscribe. We'll be coming out with a couple more videos over other topics like biochemistry, physiology, and the like later in the, later in the year, hopefully in the next couple weeks. But as always, Thank you for watching Renegade Medicine. This is Jay Allen. Until next time, adios.